Well, good morning and uh, another beautiful autumn day. And uh, for this Good Friday, for this Friday, we've had a very mixed week. Uh, for September is traditionally a beautiful month as we uh, enter the season of autumn. Change, uh, the trees are changing colour and it uh, looks like a really good day today. And hope you're all well and keeping uh, positive during this constantly changing and difficult times. So, but let's hope for some more weather, some more fine weather, though we uh, could do with a little bit more rain. So, welcome again to Morning Prayer, live from Mill Lane, Wedmore. And a big hello to those who of you will, who will be watching later. Uh, you're very, very welcome. And as always, if there's something you'd like me to pray for, please feel free to put on the comments. That would be great. I must apologise to Mary for last week that uh, I didn't include in the intercession to pray for a grandson who's, I believe, struggling a little bit at school, but I hope he's now uh, settling uh, back into it and, uh, and I hope he's fine. Uh, morning, Sue. Hope you're well this morning. But before we start the service properly, just to mention that uh, it's a lesser festival today for a person who's called Lancelot Andrews, who is the Bishop of Chichester, Ely and Win Winchester. He was born near to the Tower of London in 1555, an educated merchant tailor's school in Pembroke Hall, Cambridge, where he was elected fellow in 1575. He was ordained in 1580. In 1589, he became vicar of St Giles Cripplegate, where he soon developed a reputation as a preacher before returning to Cambridge as master of Pembroke Hall. In 1601, he became dean of Westminster and four years later was consecrated Bishop of Chichester. Now, he's one of the most learned men of his time. He was present at the 1604 Hampton Court Conference, out of which emerged the new translation of the Bible, which became known as the Authorised or King James Version. Andrews himself worked on the first part of the Old Testament. In an age of Calvinist theology and largely low church ceremonial, Andrews was an articulate exponent of a more sacramental pre-Tractarian form of high church Anglicanism, giving respectability and academic underpinning to a movement that was later, later to be associated with Bishop, Archbishop Lord. But unlike Lord, Andrews was not himself a controversial or combative figure. He was essentially a scholar, and it was upon sound learning and a desire that Anglican worship should be based on ordered ceremonial that he adopted and developed practices in worship to complement his belief in the real presence and to honour the incarnate Christ. His ceremonial practices were largely a personal matter in his private chapel, where others adopted them. It was by Andrew's example, not by his persuasion. He was an outstanding theolo theologian of the high church movement in the Church of England, writing from a uniquely Anglican point of view about the church, the sacraments and the epistemology. He counted Richard Hooker and George Herbert among his friends. But in his own day, he was best known as a preacher. He preached regularly at the court of James I and many of his sermons were published. Over 300 years later, T.S. Eliot, Eliot took some words from Andrew's 1622 Christmas sermon, a cold coming they had of it, for the opening five lines of his poem, The Journey of the Magi. Magi. Andrew's translated from Chichester to Ely in 1609. In the same year, he was appointed a Privy Council. He was further translated to Winchester in 1619. He died at Winchester Palace in 1626 and is buried in Southwark Cathedral. And for one of his one of his prayers. O thou, o thou who sendest forth the light, createst the morning, and making the sun rise on the good and the evil. Enlighten the blindness of our minds with the knowledge of thy truth. Lift up the light of thy countenance upon us, that in thy light we may see light, and at the last 
in the light of grace, the light of glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now as we start the morning prayer, I will be lighting the candle. To s so let's have a moment of silence and reflection before we begin. Let us pray. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so that may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Uh, the Psalm of the Week, which we've been reading all week, is number 32. And it should be on the Facebook file page, unless you have um, got your own Bibles in front of you. Psalm 32 of David, a mascal. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of the summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover my, up my iniquity, and I said, I will confess my congressions to the Lord, and you forgive the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you while you may be found. Surely when the mighty waters rise, they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, you have, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the man who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad. Your righteousness sing all who are upright in heart. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The reading for today is from Acts chapter 18, verses 1 to 21. So in this chapter, we have Paul coming to Corinth, his private conversation with Aquila and Priscilla, and his public reasonings with the Jews from whom, when they rejected him, he turned to the Gentiles. The great success of his ministry there and the encouragement of Christ gave him in a vision to continue his labours there in the hopes of future success. The molestations which after some time he wet, met with there from the Jews, which he got pretty well through by the coldness of Gallio, the Roman governor, in the cause, the progress Paul made through many countries after he continued long at Corinth for the edifying watering of the churches which he founded and planted, in which circuit he made a short visit to Jerusalem. The 
in Corinth. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife, Priscilla. Because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome, Paul went to see them. And because he was a tent maker, as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade the Jews and the Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. But when they opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protests and said to them, Your blood be on your heads, I am innocent of it. From now on I will go to the Gentiles. Then Paul left the synagogue and went next door to the house of Titus Justus, a worshipper of God. Crispus, the synagogue leader, and his entire household believed in the Lord, and many of the Corinthians who heard Paul believed and was baptised. One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid, keep on speaking, do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one is going to attack you and harm you, because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. While Gallio was pro council of Achaia, the Jews of Corinth made a united attack on Paul and brought him to the place of judgment. This man they charged with persuading the people to worship God in contrary to the ways of the law. Just as Paul was about to speak, Galileo said to them, If you Jews were making a complaint about some misdemeanour or serious crime, it would be reasonable for me to listen to you. But since it involves questions about words and names and your own law, settle the matter yourselves. I will not be a judge of such things. So he drove them off, and the crowd then turned to Sothenus, the synagogue leader, and beat him in front of the pro-council, and Galileo showed no concern whatsoever. So Paul stayed on in Corinth for some time, and he left the brothers and sisters and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Before he sailed, he had his hair cut off at Centuria because of a vow he had taken. They arrived at Ephesus, where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila, he himself went into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they asked him to spend more time with them, he declined. But as he left, he promised, I will come back if it is God's will. Then he set sail from Ephesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And uh, as we uh, come to our intercessions. God, you have given all peoples on on common origin. It is your will that they will be gathered together as one family in yourself. Fill the hearts of humankind with fire of your love and with the desire to choose justice for all. By sharing the good things you gave us, may we secure an equality for all. Our brothers and sisters throughout the world, may there be an end to division, strife and war. May there be a dawning of a truly human society built on love and peace. We ask this in your name. And some prayers for justice in our land. Grant us Lord God the vision of your world as you love, as your love would have it. A world where the weak are protected and none go hungry or poor. A world where the riches of creation are shared and everyone can enjoy them. A world where different races and cultures live in harmony and mutual respect. A world where peace is built with justice, and justice is guided by love. Give us the inspiration and courage to build it, through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Almighty God, you're a God of justice and righteousness. The prophet Amos says, may justice roll down like a river and righteousness like a never failing stream. We pray for the justice system in our own country, the judges, the legislators, the law enforcement work with community leaders and advocates to end oppression and exploitation. Together bringing justice to our cities, our nation and all around the world, especially thinking of the issues in the United States. Also, we pray for all the public officials and those in law enforcement, that the Holy Spirit grant them the gifts of wisdom, understanding and humility in the exercise of their duties as they try to serve the common good, especially at this time that they work with compassion and fairness and in face it, enforcing the COVID rules and regulations. Help us to provide support to them and for us to act responsibly. responsibly. This is the work of the Lord. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. As we think of the people working on the PMC, we ask for your help for the leaders and workers within our own benefits and the diocese who are working on the PSC. Give them strength to deliver your work and help your grow, church grow in fellowship and love, that we may deliver your kingdom here in this benefice and across the diocese and the world. Shower us with your blessings, dear Lord, especially here in uh, the Isle of Wedmore benefice, that the work they're looking at to help the isolated and the lonely, let us hold them in our hearts and daily prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And at this time of the pandemic, we think of our uh, health service, both national and local and across the world. Creator God, who knit, knits each person together in their mother's womb, it is you who reveal knowledge to scientists and doctors. We thank you for the heritage of medical breakthrough, expertise and welfare we enjoy in our nation, which is freely available to us because of your revelation and the faithfulness of previous generations. Renew thanksgiving in our hearts for what we've received because of others' work and sacrifice. Healer of nations, you provide insight to all who seek you and defend those in need. We thank you for the gift of health services in our nation, freely available to everyone, no matter their background, income level or need. Give your wisdom to our government, health professionals and advisors as they seek the right reforms. Bless our health service to thrive and to prosper and to heal. Bless our doctors and nurses both here within the Cheddar Valley and the Isle of Wedmore Benefice and wider in Somerset and across all our nation, to bring healing and bless our nation to thank, understand, thank and honour those who seek to bring us health, for everything that's good comes from you. God, our Father, provider and sustainer, we lift to you a care system which sometimes struggles in crisis. We ask us to love one another, but we sat back and let a failing system take our place. You call us to protect the vulnerable and the poor, but we stood by and watched it, ignored those most in need. You teach us to respect the wisdom of all the people, but we've allowed it to strip their dignity. Father, forgiveness. We stand now to ask for your help for those who are hurting, lonely, frightened or anxious. For those in need of care, we pray for a new system. Let's 
puts people first and provides care simply and easily to those who need it. We pay for a fair and straightforward system which doesn't dim discriminate by location or favour only those who can understand its complexity. So hear our prayer and the cry of those in need. Oh God, we thank you for all our healthcare systems and those who work in them. We pay for health care workers known only to us that through their loving compassion those who are vulnerable and needy might come to know healing and peace in their lives. We pray for those who have to make difficult decisions about resources or treatments, that they will do so with care and integrity. Lord, continue your ministry of healing in the lives of those who are broken, vulnerable and in need. Lord Jesus, who healed the sick and gave them new life, be with doctors, nurses and carers as they act as agents of your healing touch in desperate times. Keep them strong yet loving, and when their work is done, be with them in the weariness and in their tears. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as always, Lord, remembering our prayers this morning, members of all our churches and the benefits. Give them all your love and encouragement, especially for those on the edge of our church. Give strength to our con congregations that they stay strong and keep working for you. And again, we bring into your prayers the leaders of Messy Church and Little Lambs and other youth, other youth groups that you may offer them guidance as they look to restart in over the coming months under very different circumstances. And we ask you to care and protect all those who are facing an uncertain future following redundancy, especially, especially redundancy, especially those in our area and known just to ourselves. And as we uh, think of the upcoming services we, this weekend. Our prayers and love go out to Sam and Joe Healy on their ordination over this next week. I'm really looking forward to welcoming Sam back into church this Sunday at St Mary's for our benefit service. And give strength to all our church leaders across the benefits who are trying to resolve issues with how we will be doing our remembrance services and our services at Christmas. Merciful Father, Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Collect of the Day. Lord God, who gave to Lancelot Andrews many gifts of your Holy Spirit, make him a man of prayer and a pastor of your people. Perfect in us that which is lacking in your gifts of faith, to increase it, of hope, to establish it, of love to kindle it, that we may live in the light of your grace and glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. And to close. Lord, bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
it just leaves me to say uh, morning to Sue Smith, Mary Edbrook and Angie and uh, thanks for your congratulations uh, Jane's nephew was uh, proud to announce his wife had twins yesterday and so uh, we're very blessed to have another two great nieces so uh, it's very good news for the uh, the Buick family so uh, that's just to say I wish you all a uh, a wonderful weekend and I think Richard is back tomorrow before he goes off to Sam's ordination at the cathedral and hopefully we'll see a lot of you on Sunday as uh, Sam take, goes through his first service after his ordination and uh, welcome him back after uh, his wedding to Joe. Anyway, have a lovely day, have a lovely weekend and God bless.